Hello, it's Friday, and I welcome you to our devotions. I'm Pastor David Shub at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. Our reading for these devotions is from the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, starting at the 12th verse. It says, Therefore, just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior members, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. A couple days ago, I had the honor of being able to gather with other members of the West Bend clergy at Holy Angels to hold a prayer service focused on the struggles around race. These verses were part of that service. To me, they are a vision of Christ's hope in the midst of the struggles that we face. Paul speaks in these words to a church that's divided. They're divided along lines of ethnic understanding, wealth and privilege, different faith understandings, different standings in the community, and in that times, between slave and free. These divisions threaten to tear them apart, and so God offers them, through Paul's writing, a different way to look at the world. The world is not a competition to see who wins and who loses. The world is a wonderful, connected reality, each piece a part of a greater whole. It's a reality that requires us to truly truly respect and cherish each and every member, every person, every one, even ones who are so radically different from us, because all are intended to be a part of the body. Paul goes on to say that sometimes that means we give more to some than we do to others because they need more. They need the benefit of our love and care. It's way too easy to fall into the trap of being right, being best, being the winner, getting what we think we deserve, and failing to care, really care, for the world around us. I've recently had to come to grips with that within myself in a number of ways. Being called back to this vision is really, really important to me right now. Our divisions in race and politics and economics and whatever all seem to flow back to the reality that we so easily forget this vision of God. The vision God raises up for us of our interconnectedness, not independence, but interconnectedness. I went back to one of my old All Saints sermons and found images of what this kind of thinking looks like and has looked like in my life. Harry Henry Zebel was my German teacher my freshman and sophomore year of high school. I don't know quite how to describe them. Other teachers were trying to get you to respect them or like them or fear them or to do your work. But Mr. Zebel instead was just, well, Mr. Zebel. 
He was a man who cared for his students. He did everything for them. He would give extra time to those who were struggling. He was always there to care for us and listen to us. He never was afraid to share his faith or his home or his life with his students. I remember the nights he welcomed the German club students into his home for games and just talk. We could share anything with this man who would love and accept us for just who we were. Just two years after I graduated from high school, he died of a heart attack, leaving a wife and a young child behind. But all who knew him got a glimpse of the kingdom where people of all tribes and nations would find a place in God's love. As he had been embraced by the Lord, he tried to embrace all others, and I've tried to mirror that in my life, to find the blessing that he found. In seminary, Chris and I studied with a saint who spent his life striving for what is right. He walked with Martin Luther King Jr. He spoke out constantly about the inequities and the injustices of the world. He poured his life out for the sake of others. And we saw in him a glimpse of the way the world could be. We saw the world that God hoped to bring into being where all God's children were treated with dignity and with respect And I pray this might be the way the world is. And I believe it can and will be because of the glimpse of righteousness and justice I got in him. My grandma Shub was always concerned with the children who were around her. The young man who lived next door, Lenny. He could be... He could be a handful. He could be a wild one. And in many neighborhoods... And many in the neighborhood wondered about him. But grandma saw something in him that others didn't, and she welcomed him into her house and cared for him like he was her own. And so it was for every child, including her grandchildren. I remember Garam Shub listening to my endless prattle about the stupidest things because she loved me and thought I was important. My grandma Berger, rather than live a quiet life in the retirement community she went to spend her final years in, instead spent her time helping those people who were in need around her 24-7. She was helping people with housework and shopping, listening and caring for the hurting and the sad. They were all important to her. It was amazing. I remember Christopher from when I was young. He was one of the youngest, I remember, who gave me this image of what this verse is all about. When others on the playground were pushing and shoving and competing and making fun of one another, he was always drawing us together. He would step into the fights and remind us we were friends. He would pick the one up who was left out. He would encourage us to work as a team. There was no one, as far as I remember, who he was ever at odds with. This young 10-year-old boy saw that God meant us to be together in peace, and he lived it each and every day. I don't know how it happened to Chris, but I remember the glimpse of what we see in this passage. All God's children connected together. May this vision that Paul offered guide our decisions in all that we do. Let us pray. Lord, help us live into this powerful vision that Paul offers us. Help us live the truth that we are all connected in the body of Christ. All of us. Amen. May you find yourself embraced and included in the wonder of God's love that binds us all together. May you have a wondrous day.